Hi, I'm Dr. Liz Carter, and this week I wanted to talk a little bit more about sleep. Last week I talked about my number one recommendation for better sleep, so if you missed that video, go ahead and check that one out uh, before you look at this one. So with this one, I wanted to talk a little bit about ways to stop insomnia through Chinese medicine. So we're going to look at how your sleep times are correlated with different organs in Chinese medicine and how that might be affecting your sleep and then what you can do about it. So you can see my nice little diagram here I've drawn. Um, hopefully you can read it and if not I'll, I'll explain it all for you. So the idea behind this is that in Chinese medicine each organ has a two hour time period on the clock. And when I say organ in Chinese medicine it's not the same as a Western medicine organ. So if I say your spleen or your liver or your gallbladder in Chinese medicine, they, they do have some overlap to the Western organs, but they also have a mental and emotional component as well as spiritual in Chinese medicine. And sometimes the, the exact kind of physiological functions don't completely match. So if I say your liver's out of balance here, you know, if you can't get to sleep between these times, it doesn't mean your actual physical liver that there's, there's an actual, you know, um, pathological problem with it. Um, in terms of Chinese medicine, there might be, but that doesn't mean it's translated functionally into your body um, in the same way as we think of it. So just a little disclaimer. Um, so here are here's the entire clock with all of the times. So you can see our, our two hour time slots all the way around. Um, so these are the typical hours that we want to sleep between and would be kind of an ideal eight hours to get, um, even maybe nine, a little bit, half an hour on either side there. Um, because the, the it's not um, these lines are hard and fast on the chart, but the energetic influence of the organ during those hours is not hard and fast. So you're gonna have, for instance, this first slice up here from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, is gallbladder, right? Which I have written written right over here. So that energy is actually gonna start kind of increasing around 10:30 or so, um, and then it will fully leave. Um, or at around 1.30. So you have this kind of ebb and flow, right? It's the same with seasons, it's the same with many things. It's not this, this hard and fast start and stop. Um, so oftentimes, yeah, having this 10.30 to 7.30 window for sleep would be pretty ideal. But um, yeah, let's jump into kind of some of the organs I want to talk about today here. So you can see I've outlined the main ones right over here on the side. So gallbladder is from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Liver is from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. Uh, next is lung, which is 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. And large intestine is 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. So again, um, these times on the clock are when this organ in Chinese medicine has the most energy. So it's the most up and it's the most active, which, you know, sometimes not great during sleep, depending on what's going on. Um, so, so that's why these organs in particular are the most important to pay attention to. And then you can see that I've also starred these over here. Um, so it's kind of a complex system, it's pretty neat, where we've got the highest energy for these organs here, and then the organs the exact opposite, so for liver and gallbladder, the opposite is um, heart and small intestine. These are at their lowest energy when they're, when they're at the, um, the opposite end of the clock. So from 11 to 3 a.m., these fire organs here, the heart and small intestine, are at their lowest energy. So normally you wouldn't think that would be a problem, right? If it's low energy, it's probably not gonna influence anything that's going on. But if it does get too low, it can really start to impact what's going on here in the liver and gallbladder or the wood organs. Um, and then we see the same thing with lung and large intestine, and then we've got kidney and urinary bladder over here that can also influence it. And kidney and urinary bladder are particularly influential because we all tend to be very depleted with kidney energy um, and bladder energy because uh, kidney is looked at as our reserves and um, you know what uh, what we have to pull from when we're under a lot of stress and we're under a lot of stress all the time so um, the kidney getting depleted and the bladder getting depleted can really start to impact our hours of sleep over here but for the purposes of the video today I'm gonna focus mainly on that liver uh, sorry, gallbladder, liver, lung, and large intestine. So let's get into a little bit about what that means, um, gallbladder and liver-wise. So um, they are part of the wood um, constitution or element, which if you've watched any of my other, any of my other videos or sees me as a patient or have taken my five-element personality test, you know a little bit about what that wood means. Um, 
Wood is very driven to achieve, very hard worker, um, pushes forward, gets things done essentially. So a lot of times people will notice their energy come up, start to come up around 10.30 or so um, because the influence of that gallbladder organ is really coming in. Um, so gallbladder in Chinese medicine, one of its energetic properties is that it's the decision maker. So um, if you have lots of big decisions on your plate um, with family, job, relationships, anything like that, or maybe you're just really bad at making decisions and you feel like you're caught in indecision a lot, sometimes this period of the clock will be the time that you're waking up. Um, so if, if there's excess energy in an organ, that's really when we're gonna get this kind of insomnia or waking up. And a lot of times I hear from my patients that, you know, oh, I'll always wake up at 1 a.m. or I'll always wake up at 3 a.m., something like that. Um, so that's why I'll always ask if people have difficulty sleeping, you know, what time is it really hitting you? Because then we get to see where does this show up in which organ and okay, we need to treat that, right? We need to work on getting that energy balanced in the organ. Um, so typically if they're excess, it'll be a problem. Sometimes if they're deficient, it will, it will also be a problem depending on what's going on. So gallbladder with that decision maker and that driving forward, this time of night can be very creative, which is, which is tough for those people who are night owls. A lot of times they end up being this wood element or wood constitution. Um, because and they have their greatest energy right here which is a little bit cruel because we all tend to have you know a lot of people have nine to five jobs and to get up in the morning when really this is a kind of the optimal work time um, this gallbladder liver um, for a wood element so especially if you're a wood element it's really important to try to start to wind down around 10 30 so you miss this kind of uptick in energy that starts with this gallbladder when the gallbladder is overactive, that's when you really start to have the issues in this 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. time. So a nice way to look at it and what could be helpful is if you feel like you are stuck in indecision or there's big decisions on your plate, take a break really use this time that you're up to process through those feelings and emotions. That's really gonna be the key to most of these things I'm gonna talk about is this emotional processing. Because it, when we wake up, you know, we get frustrated and oh my gosh, we're, our body's doing the wrong thing and I don't understand what's happening. But really what your body's saying is that, hey, you've got so much built up in this organ energetically, mentally, sometimes physically, that, and that you have not dealt with during the day. I need to wake you up right now and make you work through this, right? And most of the time we don't end up working through it because we're frustrated and we want to go back to sleep and that's a major um, emotion of the wood organ as well. So anytime between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. is like frustration and anger central. <laughs> so um, when, the, when the organ's out of balance, not always, but um, yeah, so it's really important to try to process that out of the system before um, before you go to bed that night because if you if you let that that vent happen your body's not going to feel the need to process it during these hours that you really need to rest and if you think about it sleep is incredibly essential right we start to get nutty if we've been 24 hours without sleep 48 72 is severe psychosis right so it's it's incredibly essential and your body knows that it's incredibly essential because that's how we heal right and when we rest so if it's waking you up during this incredibly crucial time to maintain your life force and, and how you're feeling in the world, there's something really big going on, right? So, so that's kind of a different mindset to look at all of this, right? Not to be necessarily frustrated and upset um, about waking up, but really ask like, hey, whoa, there must be a lot that's happening that I really need to deal with if I'm waking up at this time. And especially if it's one time in particular, that really tells you, especially a lot of people wake up in this liver time, the one to 3 a.m. and there's a lot of frustration and anger that really needs to be processed. Um, so it's just taking a little more critical look at our emotions. So whatever way that makes sense to process your emotions is really important. Um, journaling is fantastic. It's a really nice way, just stream of consciousness, no thoughts of, you know, this is what I should write and this is how I should write, just let it out. And it's very surprising what comes up. Um, and when you start to make that a habit, your body will shunt more and more of the emotions that need to be processed into those pages. Um, and it will offer you some relief here. Um, for wood especially, because they're so active um, and, and hardworking and driven, movement is really important. A lot of times just getting exercise in can be massively helpful for insomnia at this time of night, especially any time of night, definitely, but this time especially. So 
really consider trying to increase your workouts um, if you're having trouble sleeping between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. Um, so yeah, looking at liver, we talked about that a little bit. Really common time for people to wake up between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. So liver in the body is the general. It's the military force. It's this is our plan, this is what's happening, we're making decisions, we're moving forward, let's go. Um, so again, a really creative and productive time of night for a lot of people. Um, so sometimes if you wake up and you feel inspired or there's a project you need to work on, sometimes you just have to work on it and get it, get it out of your system. <laughs> and other times, it's making time for that during the day so your body isn't feeling the need to wake you up and get you done, uh, get it done during the night. But sometimes I realize that, you know, everybody has a lot of stress and a lot of projects and whatnot, and sometimes that's the only time you can fit it in to work on. So occasionally, you know, staying up um, is okay. I had a patient who, um, it was a pretty wonderful story, actually. She was really inspired to write a book um, on children's education, and she had been in a job that she didn't like for a very long time. And um, she quit her job and started working on her book and she would come in and talk to me about these problems sleeping that she was having. Um, and she was like, man, I am just not getting to sleep until 3 a.m., 5 a.m., you know, I'm, I'm sleeping till noon, it's just completely shifted. And it was like, oh, well, you know, what are you doing? And she's like, well, I'm working on my book. Um, and within six months, she had written her entire book and had it published, which was amazing. It was fantastic. And you could see all this creative energy and impetus that had been kind of bubbling and brewing in her for 10 or 15 years had finally come to the surface and her body was running with it. It was like, I am just gonna get this out of here and we're gonna work on it. And she was pretty tired by the end of it. Um, but after she got that big creative push out, her sleep cycle started to go back to normal. So that is kind of a rare circumstance, but it can happen depending on what's going on and what you feel is meaningful in your life that you need to express and get out and produce and put into the world. Um, and I think a lot of us really are denied that nowadays. You know, we consume a lot, but we don't put the effort into producing. And the wood element is very much so about producing. What can I put into the world um, and create? So something to think about for liver as well. And again, the liver emotion um, and wood element is anger and frustration. So if you feel that coming up, try that exercise, try journaling, let off some steam earlier in the day so it doesn't have to come out during this time of night. Um, great, so moving on to the next set of organs. So the next set is within the metal element. Um, and we've got lung and large intestine. So when we look at these guys, lung, um, 3 a.m. is a very common time to wake up, which is this liver-lung transition, or 4 a.m. too. So I most often see this time period happen for people when they're in the middle of significant grief, because the lung's emotion is grief and loss. So um, that is something to be aware of if you've had, um, and it doesn't necessarily even have to be the death of, of someone, though that really does happen quite often. Um, for that 3 to 5 a.m. insomnia time. It can be the loss of a job, the loss of a friendship, um, loss of, of anything of, of yourself if you're in a job or a relationship that you don't enjoy, something like that. So the, really examining where loss and grief are in your life if you're waking up around that time um, can be really, really helpful. And again, journaling with it, um, calming down the nervous system, taking a bath, um, all of these really lovely things and grief is a very very difficult emotion to process because it's a lot of emotions rolled into one anger and frustration and sadness and sometimes anxiety there's a lot going on there so really be patient with yourself with this one um, it takes a lot to work through but it will if you devote some time you will see that that time of day start to shift and Another really interesting point that I see is when people really do start to take this advice and look internally and try to make these shifts, you start to see either their insomnia goes away completely or you start to see it shift through the clock. So I often see this as people process their grief. Sometimes it starts out at 3 a.m. and then it moves to 4 and then we've got 5 and then maybe we're at 6 a.m. Um, and 7 a.m which is, it's a pretty amazing cycle to see, and um, it's it's a great check-in point for you two to see, oh, wow, okay, I, <laughs> I'm i moving through this, I'm, I'm making some progress. So um, our last kind of slice of the pie here from 5 to 7 a.m. is large intestine. So large intestine energetically, mentally, spiritually is all about 
letting go, which makes a lot of sense when you pair it with grief, right? We, grief is this massive thing we have to process and we tend to hold it a lot. We kind of tend to suppress and internalize it because it's not a very acceptable emotion to process, at least in the US, you know, we're, we're very quiet about it most of the time. And a lot of other people don't really know how to handle us when we're grieving. People want to jump in and fix something um, rather than actually just be with us and listen and support, which is incredibly hard to do. Um, so with that 5 to 7 a.m. time, large intestine is really, it's about that appropriate letting go. So if you're waking up from 5 to 7, oftentimes you're holding on way too tightly to something or there's something that, that you're letting go of way too quickly. And, and usually that comes from the holding and holding and holding forever and then just having to let it go rather than letting it go, you know, daily type of thing, just like the large intestine should do physically. Um, we have this big buildup that we just can't hold it anymore. It's like the floodgates open and it all comes rushing out, right? And, and that's not what we want. You know, ideally we want balance. We want to be able to hold and let go appropriately um, rather than rather than these massive swings. Um, and that is very challenging for the metal element because they are very structured people. Um, and they, they are very black and white. They do not like transitions. And you see that reflected in the organs. They just kind of want to move from one thing to the next. Um, but that's, that's one of the hardest lessons in, in this as well is, is um, learning transitions have to happen and, and are okay and are healthy. So yeah, so those are the main sleep times, I think. You know, right, and with large intestine, yep, think about letting go, think about holding on, think about journaling, think about excess, you know, and, and these, a lot of times, you know, I realize when we talk about all these organs, these are probably bringing up some really big, deep issues. Um, they're not light or superficial fixes, um, which is good. That means we're getting to the meat of things because nothing is easy that you need to fix. Um, sorry, I'd burst your bubble if that was, <laughs> if you were thinking that, but, um, but it is worthwhile, right? Because we really get to the depth of these issues. And when we do that and we expose these things that are kind of holding us back or we're holding on to in life, that's when we really start to see change. Um, so with insomnia, especially, it can be very resistant to treatment or, um, you know, to shifting out of insomnia because most of the time these are, these are really issues that get to the core of who we are. Um, so just know that when you start to look at things and, you know, you start with little steps every day, um, feel free to get some more support for yourself if you need to, you know, um, a professional counselor is a wonderful way to go. Five element acupuncture, I cannot recommend highly enough because that's what we do. We balance these organs so they can function a little bit better. Um, but if you've had long-standing insomnia, um, a lot of really deep emotional stuff will probably start to surface. And again, it's wonderful because when we let it out, it's gone. It's not in our body anymore. We can move forward. We don't have to carry it around with us anymore. And we are really good at carrying around a lot with us all the time. Um, so it's really, really great to examine these behavioral and emotional patterns. I hope some of this resonated with you. I hope that made sense. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to leave me, um, yeah, some questions in the comments or on my Facebook page. But, um, I really hope this was helpful and, and maybe gave you a little insight into, into what's really going on when your body's waking you up in the middle of the night. Okay. Thanks so much. That's it for this week. Take care.